Joe Holbrook here, the Cloud Tech Guy. Really excited to have you here to talk about the top five interview questions for 2022. Now, if you're in the cloud now or you're preparing for a career in the cloud, you're going to probably need to go through an interview or two or three for that matter. And every company is different. We know that. So because of that, one of the things we need to do is prepare for that next interview. So you want to move up in life from making 80K a year to 160 or whatever, that's great. You have to prepare to do that. You have to sell yourself. One of the ways that we do that is, of course, to make sure that we can answer the right questions in the right way. Now, when it comes to the top five questions, I'm going to go through basically five questions that come up pretty routinely and that we probably really need to know for 2022. Uh, they're going to be technically focused. I'm going to have separate videos on our HR questions and our sort of organizational fit questions, as I like to call them. But basically, let's go through uh, the top five questions now. They're not exactly in any order uh, or anything like that. And they're going to be focused mainly on AWS. I will have uh, different videos for Google, Cloud, and Azure down the road. But pretty much AWS is the uh, majority of the roles out there we're going to have to, to know it. It's just part of the gig, right? The first question is as follows. Can you explain to me what exactly is included in an Amazon machine image? What would be the components of an AMI? Can you please explain that to me? Well, that's a really good question. So one of the things when it comes to Amazon is we're going to have to deploy EC2. So EC2, we know we could go in and select basically what, what is a template and deploy that template so that we have our virtual machine. But there are some things required for that that we really need to have together here. The first is that template is going to, of course, have information about the root volume for that specific instance. The second thing that is really important, of course, is to have permissions. So we need to have launch permissions. We need to basically tie it to that account to be able to launch that AMI and again, have the right details put together. The last thing we really need uh, is to, of course, tie it to a block device. So we need to um, have it mapped to EVS basically so that it has that disk space for that volume. So those are the three main components. The second question would be focused on understanding the different types of instances available in EC2. So generally when we go in, not only will we select an AMI, we also need to, of course, understand what are the available instances. For example, do we use general purpose? Do we use compute optimized, accelerated computing, uh, memory optimized, storage optimized, right? So it's about understanding that. So what I like to do is typically uh, just challenge the interviewee on uh, basically do they actually have a grasp of maybe why you'd want to uh, choose one type of instance over another. So one of the things that you should prepare for is to go into uh, the different types of instances and understand, for example, if I'm trying to uh, deploy uh, a query engine on EC2, it's probably going to be different than if I'm running a static website, right? Or I want to deploy a blockchain. So because of that, I need to know, for example, uh, there's sort of an understanding of requirements around compute power, storage, etc. Uh, also, to do I need, for example, a higher end processor or can, can I get away with, for example, a lower end or, or an older one, right? So it's all about understanding um, those specific requirements. The third question would be more focused on does the interviewee actually understand the types of load balancing in EC2? Now, we have three types. We have the application load balancer, the network load balancer, and the classic load balancer. Now, the use case for each one is very different. So generally, at a high level, I really want to understand, does the prospect uh, actually sort of tell you at a high level, I would use, for example, for a web-based application, layer 7, because it's going to be routable at layer 7, 
this type of load balancing versus should I use network load balancing, which is going to be layer four type of load balancing. And again, it's going to use different routing algorithms, and it's, it's really a different use case. And then the classic load balancer, of course, supports both, but at a very limited uh, scale. So with that said, it's just really understanding does, does a prospect understand one or the other, at least at a high level. Now, generally, too, if they say they have more experience, then I'd like to dive down into, uh, for example, um, how the targets are set up and areas like that as well. But we want to at least know the load balancing in EC2. So that would be the third question. Question number four. This one here has to do with the AWS storage gateway. Now this is, of course, going to be a capability in AWS that I want to see if they actually understand it and have actually had experience basically maintaining basically data disbursement, availability, uh, basically setting up basically restorations. And this will really help gauge the experience of this prospective uh, cloud architect or engineer, let's say. So for example, I would give a scenario of you're basically implementing the storage gateway and you're going to use basically a gateway cached approach, a volume that I should say, at like, for example, a main office. And then something happens with the link between your main office and your secondary production site or whatever that situation is. One of the things would be to sort of figure out, would they have an understanding of, again, without having the full scenario, let's say, you know, what would be the approach you would use to enable the, the branch or the main office and the production site, let's say, uh, to communicate again, to be back up and running. So basically, we would probably want to see uh, the interviewee sort of come up with, you know, an answer around just launch basically a new instance AMI and then restore from a snapshot. That would be the quickest approach typically. So we don't want to, um, for example, um, you know, basically go in and load files and go through all that work, right? So we want to just basically take what we already have and spin it up again. So basically, the fastest way to do that generally would be to launch a new storage gateway instance. And that would be just because of the fact that it would reduce a lot of the, the troubleshooting or the problem solving that we'd have to spend time on, on why that link went down. So if the link is up and it went down for whatever reason, we probably don't have time to figure it out right now. We just need to get it back up and running. So that would be the fourth question I would typically uh, want to ask uh, around uh, what we're seeing right now with migrations and maintaining data disbursement. The fifth and the final question will be focused on basically networking. And this is a drill down question where I want to talk about VPCs first and then talk about subnets and then routing, for example, because we really need to know net networking at a really high level, but also a deep level as well. Now, once again, it all comes down to trying to gauge the experience of that potential uh, cloud architect or cloud engineer, let's say. Now, the first part of the question would be, can you tell me about why we need a VPC? And uh, what, it, what is it? Well, generally, again, we know a VPC is really uh, very similarly like a sandbox we're going to deploy with resources in it. It allows us to create subnets as part of, uh, again, our network disbursement. So basically, again, one of the things that we want to do is set up, of course, a virtual private cloud. And as part of that VPC, we want to be able to establish connection to, of course, on-prem uh, in, in most cases, of course. And that allows us to interact with our corporate network to the AWS VPC. Another thing I'd like to talk about typically is around subnets. And I want to grasp sort of the understanding around subnets, why we need them, why we would use them. Um, basically, again, subnets are what? They're focused on uh, basically 
allowing us to uh, create basically a network with, let's say, our hosts and provision them in a manner that uh, allows us to control and scale at the same time. So, for example, um, that's why we're going to divide uh, the network into basically a subnet. That's really the, the high level purpose, right? Now, another question I, I like to sort of add on to that is I would sort of ask, well, what about if I, for example, would like to change the IP of like a host and a subnet? What can I do with that? Uh, or what about routing tables? So, for example, route tables are typically used for what? To, to route network packets. Now, one of the things, too, is how many route tables can we have in a subnet? Well, we can only have one. So that, again, is an experience-based question because of the fact that we would know that that person would probably be very well aware of that. Now, what about if, for example, we want to attach multiple subnets, for example, uh, to a route table? Can we do that? Well, yes, we can. But again, we can only have, for example, um, you know, very finite number of route tables in a subnet, but we can also attach multiple subnets to that row table, um, you know, as needed. So there's a few things to sort of gauge back and forth, right? And then I typically would like to talk about connectivity as well to on-prem. What would we want to use? Uh, again, more direct connect, uh, uh, you know, a VPN connection. What, what would be sort of the right use case? And typically I'd like to add to that, uh, you know, in, in that sense. So again, the fifth question would be multifaceted. It's more like gauging the network experience of uh, the potential interviewee. So that's all that I had for this specific video. Thanks for joining and definitely pay attention to the channel. Please subscribe. I'll have a ton more content coming out around cloud interviews. And also to please check out Cloud Interview Ace if you really want to uh, get started in the cloud as rapidly as possible with coaching, I'm here to help. So I hope to talk to you soon.